Okay, so for this video, we're going over, we're going to start going over absolute value functions. And if you remember, I kind of barely touched on it this year, but um, in previous years, we've talked about absolute value and how absolute value is the distance from zero, right? So it's always positive because even if you're at, if I just do a quick number line right here with my perfectly straight line, uh, if you're at negative 2, the distance from negative 2 to 0 is still a positive 2. And that's what we're looking for is how far away is it, not what the value is. And that's how we use absolute value. So when we graph this, it's going to have kind of a unique shape. So before I graph it, just... The absolute value of x, that's our basic, we call it a parent function because all of the other functions are similar to it and it's just kind of a modification of it. Um, before we graph it, let's make a little table of what our input and our output would be. So I'm going to just make an input-output table. This side's my x, this side's my y. So if I plug in 0, so that's at the origin, the absolute value of zero is zero because it's it's at the origin. There's not any distance away. Uh, if I do negative one, well, the absolute value of negative one is positive one. If I do negative two, the absolute value of negative two is positive two. Now going the other way, and I probably should have done this in a different order, but going the other way, if I plug in a one, well, I'm still one away from the origin. And if I plug in a 2, I'm still 2 away. So it doesn't matter what our input is, our output's going to be a positive number. And if you remember when we started talking, when we talked about functions, our input cannot repeat, but our output can. And that's what we have in this case, is we have a re no repeating inputs, but we do have repeating outputs. And so what would this look like if we were to graph it? Well, let's make a graph. So we have a point at our origin. Change colors here. Have this point at our origin. And then if we go to negative one, our output is a positive one. If we go to negative two, our output is a positive two. If we go to positive one, our output's a positive one. And if we go to positive two, our output's a positive two. And so what we end up with is a V shape. Like this. Okay, and that is what the parent function of the absolute value of x, that's what that graph looks like. Now, just to go over a couple of things, come back to, if I hope you remember domain, which is our set of possible x values. Well, if you look at this domain, the arrow, this arrow is going to keep on going forever, right? And eventually, I mean, back into the, it goes on forever and ever, and so eventually it's going to get to negative infinity on this arrow. So our domain starts at negative infinity, and then this arrow goes in the opposite direction out towards positive infinity. So our domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range, though, is limited because what is the lower bound of our range? What is the lowest value that our range, that our y value can have? And if you look at the graph, it does not ever go below zero. And, but it can be zero, so we actually want a square bracket. Our range includes zero and then goes out. And then going upwards, I mean, this is going to go up on forever. And so it, our upper bound is positive infinity. So that's our domain and range. And that's just the intro to absolute value functions. That's what they're going to look like. Uh, we'll go over some transformations of those next.